so let's begin then, shall we? So we decided that, you know, we, we'll talk about these moments today. We'll really let our viewers and our fans feel, you know, the excitement, of course, through, through your narrations, Tom and Danny. But this first moment, we have our player in question who played an in innings to remember, you know, scored 64 of 30 balls uh, in arresting a middle of a collapse that his side was going through, chasing a score of 217, tying the match, getting into a super over and coming through in the super over for his side, the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots. Who are we talking about? Well, it's sure to blow your breath away. <laughs> Carried the Patriots over the line, carried West Indies over the line. Danny Morrison, isn't it amazing that Ian Bishop is on air and so excited <laughs> each time Carlos Brathwaite does something spectacular? Ah, uh, remember the name. He'll never forget it. He's uh, cast in stone. That both of them. You could have Bish like this too, with a big statue in Trini, and Carlos there in, uh, well, St. Kitts and Nevis and in Barbados, where he resides, of course. But yeah, it was an amazing night. He was under pressure. Now Moods will be able to elaborate more because it just there's so much going on, Moods. But I think Carlos was he we was he captain of the yes. franchise? That's right. And there's a lot of pressure going on, wasn't there? Because it was such a revamp franchise and the coaching and the they just weren't quite on the same page, weren't they? And it was a lot of pressure on Brathwaite. And I remember you could you could sense that in um, Ian Bishop's voice. We all knew there was there were things afoot. And look, it's like families, don't always get on, do you? you know? um, but you've got to make it work. And so uh, I was really pleased for him this night. Tom, what do you recollect of, of this match and, and the performance? I mean, he had such a great day. It's almost like there's nothing he could do wrong. Yeah, look, I do remember this very clearly, um, having witnessed it live and uh, sort of knowing the back story as well, which uh, Danny sort of, uh, sort of touched on. You know, there was there was real friction uh, in the uh, in the St Kitts camp um, between the management and the players. There was sort of, which can happen when a team's not performing, and that's that was very much the case with St Kitts. And you know, Carlos being the captain has to wear and carry that burden, um, and that makes that performance even more um bigger than, than than what it was because there was a backstory that was driving um you know i suppose and inspiring carlos the leader um and, and the all-rounder out there under pressure against a very very good side you know trinidad it, it, and tkr is you know one of the strongest sides and have proven to be one of the strongest sides of the tournament over a number of years so to get a win in those circumstances against that side was extraordinary. Um, you know, Carlos, uh, you know, delivered both with bat and ball on that on that night, and and also from a leadership perspective, you know, he stepped up and took the responsibility. Um, a lot of people questioned whether he should have bowled that super over, um, but he stepped up to the plate, took the responsibility against a lot of people sort of questioning whether it was the right decision and he delivered. Absolutely. I mean, he, he batted in the super over, uh, scoring 17 off five balls. He bowled, conceding just five runs. Mm. I mean, it was just a, a superhumanic performance, some would say. Uh, Tom, would you reckon this is like a top three best CPL match? Oh, there's no question it's right up there amongst the top. We've had so many wonderful games in the Caribbean Premier League over, over time. Uh, and there's no question this one would have to rate in in that top bracket, whether it's top three, whether it's the best, whether it's in the top five, you know, that's all subjective, isn't it? Everyone has their own opinion on on what is what is good and what's not so good. Um, but certainly from my perspective and understanding what was unfolding behind the scenes, which is what a lot of viewers don't get to see, um, this was, you know, a heroic effort from uh, Carlos Brathwaite. 
Indeed, uh, we have a fan question connected to what you were saying, Tom, in, in about why you know Brathwaite brought himself to bowl despite the fact that he went for over 40 runs and. Aljari Joseph. So there's a question from Rajiv Kumar that why would he have brought himself over and not an Aljari, Zo uh, Aljari Joseph? Was it just a question of confidence? Danny, what do you reckon? Well, Mooj has touched on it. Yeah, you know, he's captain. He wants to lead from the front, took the responsibility. And I think when you look at that part of the other question, um, chose to bring himself on to bowl a super over. Um, again, experience and responsibility. And um, yeah, good question, Rajiv. Uh, I just think the captain just backs himself goes for it, and uh, as Moods and we've touched on, there was, a, there was it was an act added to the spice, I think, of the tournament. There was a little bit of that going on with the dressing room, and, that, and as I say, that happens. Um, and, you know, Carlos was under pressure. St. Kitts were under pressure. So um, I think I think it was a, a good move. Bold move, but I think the right move, because ultimately the captain, that's why he's captain. Absolutely. Tom, so just basically a high-stakes manoeuvre by... by uh our young Carlos Brathwaite. Yeah, look, I think emotion uh, drove that decision. Um, he he made the call uh, based on emotion and he was riding high with confidence because he was owning that game um, to that point. So he was carrying the momentum, carrying the confidence with the bat and ball. So he took total responsibility. Um, but if you step out of that bubble of emotion uh, you know the the real analytical view and the 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 external view would be look I think Azari Joseph is is the is probably the person that's going to deliver more often than not the the best outcome for you in that in that situation but it, it's an example of you know that there, there is a human element to decision making as well as an analytical element and I think in this case that human element override. Uh, overrode, I should say, the you know the the, the sort of the the, the analytical uh, decision. So, you know that that's the difference between um, you know I suppose spontaneous leadership and and uh, leadership that is dictated by um, uh, you know numbers and and metrics and 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 going by you know what historical data may tell you. Absolutely. Loved it. Yeah. We loved it. <laughs> it was it, it was an amazing performance.